Well, I've spent all day on it, and hopefully you can see the results. A new bike. Temperature's good. Feels good. Time's correct. I've moved that silly monstrosity that was up here down to there. So that's cool. Seat's gone back to its original colour. I thought they said monkey when I first saw it. <laughs> the airfield was a bit monkey, that's behind there. I've ordered a new one. Yeah, it's looking alright, isn't it? Burger. Fluid changes. Uh, you've just seen a picture of the green snot that just came out of the uh, diff. Uh, system. You've got your, your fill plug there and then your drain plug there. Now I can't believe it. I put, um, I let it drain for a long time. I put my high pour gear oil in there yesterday until it started to dribble out the hole. you got to wait for it to dribble out. Um, okay and then I put that back in. I've just literally thought well I'll fl that would have flushed it out by now. So I'll just undo this again and we'll, we'll put some fresh in. Look at this. I have never seen anything like it. How much poor goo is in the back of there? Anyway, that's the diff oil. We then have uh, gearbox oil. It fills through there via the squirty tube that sticks out the top of there. There's the plug that came out of it. Big long shaft. It's a 10 mil socket, so it comes out to about here. So you haven't got to reach in there or anything. And there's the drain plug. I have drained it out already. Uh, into this uh, receptacle and the engine oil filler cap um, some plug that was all done yesterday I've probably put a little bit too much in there to be fair well it wasn't fresh oil it was I, the, the original oil looked okay and it, according to the stickers under the seat it, it was last done sort of about whew, well, it's 2021, it said, but like January. So, but I don't know how many miles it's covered since then. So I'm just going to drop the lot and put in some new Silkaline 1040 semi-synthetic engine oil, proper bike stuff. Um, so you have your engine oil, your gearbox oil, transmission oil. Engine and gearbox oil are the same 10W40, and the diff is your hypoid. Well, okie kokey, right, let me crack on, and uh, yeah, I'll show you about a bit later. Okay, so fresh diff oil has now gone back in there, and I have literally loads of these, so I can do enough flush perhaps at the weekend. So, the engine oil is overfilled, because I topped it up, because it was a bit low. So, I'm just going to drop the lot, I'm going to drop the lot. I've got the silk lean there to go in, so why not, just get rid of it, it's all, it's fresh. Let's change the filters as well. There we go, there's the new filter. And I've got this little gizmo. Where is it? There it is. I bought this from uh, Lidl's. It is flipping brilliant. So that goes, yeah, that goes on the filter, like so. And just do it up, like so. And then, <laughs> turns easily. Before I do that, better drop the oil, don't we? Right, let's have a look. 
Let's get that stand out of the way. Where are we? Would have to put a socket on the end of this banner, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, you muppet. Right. Where is it? That's there. Whoa! Whoa, dude! <laughs> yeah, that came out pretty sharpish. No, not quite. <laughs> cool! Right, that's, that's magnetic, so there's no lumps of metal on it. That is a really good sign, isn't it? Okay, let's get that mopped up a bit quick before Caroline sees it. <laughs> Right, so I'm going to pause you there, and then we'll uh, take okay, that let's filter get, off. Let's get this filter off. <laughs> Undo it a bit, spin it round, do it back up. Do it back up, spin it round. Now I should be able to do that by hand. That was flipping awesome, that. Oh my god. Come on, off you come. Come on. How much longer? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Yeah, it's the messiest job on the planet, isn't it? Oil filter change and oil. Right, old freaking right. mess. Okie dokie, old filter. Let's get a little bit of oil on the end of my finger and we'll run that just around the bead. That seal of the new filter. And then we'll spin it on. <clears throat> Where are we? There. Spin it on there. Me too. Spin it on. Okay, I'm gonna give it another. Okay, I've just done that by hand. That is quite simply enough. Right, let's plonk some new oil back in there. Um, everything's drained, the plug's back in, the window is empty. Let's get a filling, baby. Did it, did it. Now it's 2,600 mil needs to go in. So we'll plonk that in there. Looks like a chocolate starfish almost, boys, doesn't it? Let's get me lid open. Where's the flipping cut out? Ah, there it is. No, it's not. Okay, let's do it. Oh, it's like <clears throat> motorcycle porn, isn't it? <laughs> nice, clear, bright. Oh, easy tiger. Nearly went over the lip then. Right, let's have a look. Got anything in the window yet? No. Okay. Can't be far away. Let's give it another good glug. Just make sure nothing's dripping from underneath the bike. <laughs> so when we start the engine, we're going to get this up to sort of midway. And when we start the engine, that will go down again because it needs to fill up the new oil filter. So that's good. We got anything showing yet? No. Well, there was four litres in here, and I need 2.6 litres. And hopefully there'll be enough left over for the uh, Honda Vision uh, lead stroke aero, whatever you want to call it. Here we go. Here we go, baby. Right, that's gone up to full and is stopping right there that's brilliant so I'm just going to fire the engine over and we'll let that circulate and we'll go from there you notice the state of the oil that came out of there proper black nasty wasn't it so I'm really pleased that I have changed all the fluids now the last thing to change is the coolant that's a completely different 
uh, kettle of fish. So we'll do that another day, I think. Hmm. Right, the engine has been running for about 30 seconds and that oil disappeared from that window straight away. Now the engine's off, it's starting to settle back down. I'm going to give that a good five minutes before I start adding or subtracting of fluids. Now, um, when, it, when, I, when I ride it, when I decelerate, I know it's got good engine braking because it's a, it's, a, it's a parallel twin, isn't it? 650. So that's going to be good anyway. But it seemed to be too good or it seemed to be bad. So I tried to spin the rear wheel and it wouldn't hardly spin. I had to proper give it some beans, didn't we? Yeah, we had to give it proper beans, yes. Uh, because the rear caliper had seized. Now... I was out here till all hours last night. Well, it took me about an hour to be fair, but it was dark, very dark. Had the light on. And when I cleaned it, I could tell that there was something not right because the brake disc was burnt. <coughs> Which leads me to think straight away <coughs> something sticky. See, it? it's all purpley. If I turn that light off, it's proper snarly burnt. It's not good at all. So anyway, went to get this off. Basically, you do the two bolts. You do one there, one there, the 12 mil. You whiz them off. And this carrier drops out completely this way. Just clears the wheel. So it's all sort of hanging out here. All nice. Now you have two slidey pins. So the caliper slides in and out of the hole of the cradle. As you apply the brake, it slides a tiny bit, and you, the brake goes on, you let go of the brake, and it slides back again. So there's a pin there, and there's a pin in there. That's a rubber bush type boot seal thing. So you've got your two pins on the carrier sticking out, and this caliper slides up and down, in and out, if you like, on there. Now, I went through the paperwork last night, and I found... Uh, loads of paperwork and it said about the uh, rear brake caliper sticking and that um, yeah, no one had really addressed it but someone had had this caliper off and rebuilt it well I say rebuilt it I mean they've tried to unstick it and what I found was this boot it's got like a it's like a little beehive if you like for want of a better word and there's a little sort of lip that sits inside this aluminium lip there there's like a like a channel inside there that the boot sort of pops into if you know what i mean well the sill was round the other way 180 degrees so the sill nothing was st it was there there was nothing stopping crap getting in there and this pin was absolutely seized solid hence the bang marks on it see the clunky marks I had the uh, I had the, the the gas torch on it, uh, heating it up. I was banging it. I was giving it a proper bang. And don't forget, I'm holding it with one hand and banging it hard with the other hand. Ooh, uh, for now. Uh, so I could not get this to budge at all. And I'm telling you seriously, it would not budge. So what I did, if I can just get it up, get it up there. Right, you see the other pin which is sort of there, if you like. There's a hex head there. And I managed to get enough clearance to get a 10 mil, uh, sorry, 12 mil spanner on there and undo that pin until it sort of went back into here. And it came out of that holder, which meant I could then literally twist the whole caliper down and then up and down by and by. Bear in mind, I'm still heating this. I'm squirting lube in there. And it was so stiff to turn. You literally had to mallet the thing around. And eventually, I worked it back and forth. More oil, more oil. Work it back and forth. And eventually, I pulled it off of those, that slidey pin. And my God, the rust and the crust and the shit that was in there. No wonder the poor flipping brakes were stuck on. There's a lit literally a micron of, of brake... Um, uh, pad left so I've got, I've got some on order they will be turning up uh, unfortunately whether it works ABS they're linked brakes so if you pull the front brake then it, uh, it does the back as well so not really a lot I can do about that plus it's got the handbrake system on it that's the handbrake mechanism there controlled from that lever there so 
Yeah, I freed it up. I put normal grease on it. Uh, more, well, Molly, no, did I put Molly grease? No, normal standard engineering grease put on there. And the other pin. Um, put that boot on properly in there and slid the pins it, it back onto the carrier. Made sure that it travelled in and out. I also greased up the two pins that hold the brake pads in because the brake, brake pads actually sort of they move along them the two pins as well. So that's all done. But I have got a kit coming to service this whole cylinder. The little piston went back. You've got two pistons. One works on the handbrake on the hand <laughs> brake and the <laughs> yeah. what what and the other one works from the when you apply the brake and the handbrake so what you do is one one piston looks like a normal piston with a hollow bit in the middle and the other piston's got like a cross on it it's like a solid piston and you put your big fat screwdriver in and you wind the piston back in so obviously when you apply the handbrake, it sort of ratchets it out on a on a, on a threaded um, rod, if you like. So yeah, it's been working brilliantly today. Unfortunately, like I say, the pads are worn right down. So that was what I was doing last night in this position, I might add. Shall we go and check on that oil now? Let's go and have a look. Okay, we'll be up with the oil. We're there. So we need to pop, pop a bit more in, don't we? So... Let's get this sorted. And that's all the fluids done. The rear calipers are now unseized. Just need to put some pads in it. I've been over the whole frame of the bike. Uh, with the plastics off. I should have filmed it all, but my camera back, um, memory was full. I will hasten to go back over what I've done in the near future. It doesn't need a lot to fill that up, you know. There we go. It's going up already, look. Well, that's a better colour already, isn't it? I reckon that's going to do. I don't want to go too far with it. And I'll check it again tomorrow night when I get in from work. <clears throat> yeah, so all of this grey plastic was kind of like a white grey, a light grey, wasn't it? All sort of scratchy and that. Went over it with a nice rag and some uh, silicon spray and it's bought this grey up beautifully. I mean, look at the dash now. It's proper sweet, isn't it? The whole bike looks a million dollars. There are a few scrazes and scratches here and there, but I'm just about to oh, tidy all this guff up. I'm gonna, I've got a little black uh, pot of enamel. I'm gonna go around touching up all the white bits. <sighs> cool, right, I'm happy. All the fluids are done now, apart from the radio. That needs to be done at a later date. I've noticed the radiator is rotten at the bottom. That is where, see on the reverse of the radiator, the fan that draws air through, <coughs> do beg your pardon, through the radiator, that's where the fan is, right at the bottom. So that's really crusty. I can see the aluminium fins have worn away. Now, uh, a new radiator is only £620. Yeah, that's going to happen. Uh, there are a few second-hand ones flying around, but they're just going to be in the same state, aren't they? And you've also got some ones made in China. Now, don't giggle or smirk, because I have had radiators from China before. Uh, one for the CBR, 600. I've had a rad for the Suzuki uh, GSX-R 250R. Um, and various... Oh, D um, DeVille. The two DeVille radiators from the same supplier in, in China. And they've been spot on. Okay, you've had to, I've had to make a little bracket here and there. To, but, hey... It's a lot different from 620, isn't it? So, there we go. I need to go and have a brew, don't I? Well, I'm going to put all this back together. And, yeah, go and have a brew, I reckon. I reckon I've earned it, don't you? Front brakes are fine, but I've ordered piston kits, caliper seals, the whole shebang for the front end, the whole shebang for the rear end. What else have I ordered? Well, I did the oil, obviously, the oil filter. Um... Yeah, stop it. Ah, uh, God, what else did I order for it? I've ordered lots of bits and pieces. There is a bolt. There is a bolt under somewhere. Where is it? Oh, it's on the other side. I can't show you it because it's on the other side. When you take this little bolt out, it's to do with the CVT drive. Um, if, if the end of the bolt is damaged, 
the end of the bit that goes inside the engine, if that's damaged, you must change it because if that fails, it's catastrophic failure and that's stratospheric money. So mine is damaged, but not not a lot, but I'm, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have done my homework and found out about this pin, this bolt, so I can order a new one and get that changed over because the original ones were how should we say this, softer than the, the new replacement. They've been modified, the part number's changed. So it's a different bolt, different material, it's stronger, it's tougher, needs to be changed. So, yeah, there's a lot of homework to do on this bike because it's colossal. Anyway, catch you in a bit, guys. Hello again, good afternoon. It's another day, another dollar. Right, we have... Air filter posty has been. I'm going to install the air filter in there in a minute. But first, I'm so intrigued by that diff oil constantly coming out like a greeny colour. Because the first drop, it was nasty, proper snotty green. I filled it up with hypoid oil. I thought great. So last night, as you saw, I uh, drained it out again, and it was still green. So now I'm going to do it again for a third time. Let me sit you up there. You're gonna need. You got your you got your eight mil bit in the uh, impact wrench, and you got your eight mil uh, Allen key, oil container, so you can get rid of the oil, and uh, yeah, the oil. Let's go. First of all, take this cover off. Right, let's see what colour it is today. It's still coming out green. Now that says to me, basically, that it's never been changed and there was a whole load of condensation built up over the years, over this well, 11 years and 26,000 miles. But it's I reckon I'm going to need another flush after this one. So uh, there we go. Let's um, just pop that out of there. Pop that out of there. Lovely and magnetic as well. Oops. Actually, that one's magnetic. That should be in the bottom, surely. That's probably me, though. Being a bit of a doofus. Right, I'm going to pause it there and get a rag and get right in there with some with some absorbent rag and just try and get everything out of there. Okie Kirky, well, I have got lots of stuff coming. Um, <clears throat> lots of parts coming from Wiimoto. One of them, the most important part, as far as I'm concerned, is a new rear disc. That's on its way. I'm going to get some new rear shock absorbers. I've got my eye actually on a second hand pair for 60 quid, that's a bargain. Uh, yeah, just waiting on, on the person to get back to me to see if they can post it or if I can get a courier to come and pick them up from their place. I can't see where any water can get into, into this diff. I just I can't see it. I really can't. Anyway, let's make a a bogey rag to go in there. Get right in there. Unfortunately, there's a gear right there. When you look through the hole, you just see you just see teeth. I did this yesterday, incidentally, with an old rag, and it came like lard came out of there. Mark and lard. Where did they go? Okay, well I think that's I mean that's gotta be the end of it, hasn't it? Goodness gracious me. Right, let's put this magnetic one back in there. In in the drain hole. 
Incidentally, these uh, eight mil Allen uh, bolts, for want of a better word, absolute. That one's absolutely mud, absolutely mud. So I think someone's had a go at trying to get that out using a cheap tool or something not the right size, and they've gone, oh, fuck, you know, balls to it. So there we go. Let's get some more oil in there. Another three hundred mil, and you basically keep pumping until it starts oozing out the hole. <laughs> My favourite job this. Right, we have some oozing going on. You see the colour is transparent, it's not milky going in, it's definitely something else. Right, let's pop a bit more in there. Reason being is the bike's actually on a slope. So therefore, when the bike gets up on a level, that level's going to drop there. So I need to really get this ready on the end of my tool. Squirt some more juice in the hole. And when it starts pouring out, whack it in. Come on, in you go. There, I think that's enough, don't you? Right, let's pinch that up. Okay, job done. Again. That's third time. That's third drain and third refill. I will do it. I do 16 miles a day to work. Eight, eight there, eight back. So I will do it again tomorrow night and just see what it comes out like. It, there can't be any more moisture in there, can there? Really, can there? But the bike after the oil changes, the gearbox change, and the engine oil change, running sweet isn't up today. So I'm really pleased about that. Cool, always worth the effort, isn't it? I have so much to do on this bike, it's ridiculous. Like I say, rear disc, and when that's all out the way, that wheel, I need to clean that wheel up because it is so snotty in there, it's ridiculous. I need to take the ABS ring off, sand that back, give it a coat of um, acid etched and then, and then a coat of paint of some description, or probably some wheel silver or something, but it's, it's so rusty, it, it's mad. I've got a Repair kit coming for the rear caliper, rear uh, kits coming for both front calipers, so that can all be serviced. Got the ear filter to go, and I'm going to do that right now. And other things that I can't remember just yet. Okay, let's crack on with fitting this new high flow air filter into the 650 Bergman Executive 2010. You need two things you need one of these, a JIS screwdriver. And you need some red grease. Why do you want red grease for, E.D., you muppet? Because it's grease for rubber. And believe me, that is proper in there tight. You've got four screws to undo. Bloody blunt one. Two, they're sort of encapsulated screws, so you're never going to drop them on the floor and lose them. They come out on the plate. Four... These things come off of off of there, off of the little pegs, these fuses. So that's that one out of the way. And that one comes off by pushing down. Perhaps I should have done this before I'm doing the screws, you stupid boy! Okay, then your plate comes out. Simple as that. Then you've got to literally... I need to go and get my pliers because that is in there so tight. Ah. No, he pliers. As if by magic. ka -ching. Right, let's grab hold of the bugger. Do you want to have a quick look in there? That's what it's like, basically. Let's see if I can hold that there whilst I muller it out. Oh, my days. Yeah, that is proper, proper tricky. I have actually blown this out with an airline and reused it for a couple of days until the new one turned up so well that's that that's the dirty one let's have a look at the new one Ooh, looks very similar very similar indeed but it's an awful lot brighter isn't it look at that and just see you see how badly that was i mean when was the last time that was changed for goodness sake right it has like a like a groove 
down there. Can you see that groove? It's like a V, isn't it? Both sides there. And of course, those sit in two little piggies. In there, look. Where are we? In there. Let's put some light on. Might make a bit of difference. And there. There's two little piggy thingies. There it is, there. So, when you're trying to push it in, you're absolutely getting nowhere because it's not good. So I'm going to give a big, oogly amount of red grease along that side and along that side. So that now shouldn't give me any bother. Metal side down. Right, let's do it. Do you know what? That's still ridiculously tight. God, oh, Jesus Christmas. That is absolutely flipping bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. So as you can see, I mean, it's a simple enough task, isn't it? It took, yesterday, it took me about five minutes to get this flipping plate back on. You got. You can only go in one way, and it's. Uh, it was a pain in the backside. It looks like it was level, but it just wasn't. Okay, that's got to be done up tight. Got to be airtight. Okay, so we'll pop that back on, and we'll pop on the fuse box. There's your fuse box. Look, this fuse, and that I think is. The flashy unit, I think. Don't quote me on that. I've not read all the gumph yet. There we go. Jobs are good. I didn't take long, did it? Four minutes, 22 seconds. Not bad. I'm slipping a bit. <sighs> getting old, you see? Getting old. So, yeah, the red grease, trust me, it did help. Because yesterday, I had to literally mallet the thing in there. <laughs> Why I didn't use red grease yesterday? I don't know. I, I guess I didn't want to get mucky today, changing the new one. Right, uh, I think that's going to wrap up this episode. Okay, well, stay tuned. Uh, keep your ear to the ground. And click the notification button. Hit the, drop a like and, and subscribe. Share with your friends if you like, or to groups. And we'll be doing a lot more burglary, burglary stuff in the future. So, like I say, when all this gear turns up... Um, from Wiimoto I will do in another episode whilst installing all of that gumph okay right take it easy until then keep your chins up keep your tongues out and be good take it easy guys